the better. All right. Good morning. <laughs> good to be with you in the Lawrence House. It's uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, uh, fourth fourth Sunday of Easter already, and uh, good to be with you. Good to be with you folks tuning in online. Good morning. Good afternoon, or whatever time you're watching this. Actually, uh, as we gather today, it is our privilege to be in the Lord's house, and so. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this week now past and for the gifts that you will provide in this coming week. Mercifully bless us with ears to hear the shepherd's voice, faith to trust your word as truth, and a heart set upon your gospel above all else. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we begin this morning, our first hymn is Glorious Day, which will be led by the choir. Let us rise and lift our voices to the Lord.
Turning now to the order of Matins on page 219, we begin together. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father. Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hands. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. You may be seated. We turn to the introit for this morning, which is taken from Psalm 23. He says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, makes me the he leads me beside the still waters. He, my soul. he leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning. It is now and will be forever. Amen. We turn now to the readings for this Good Shepherd Sunday.
The first lesson for today is taken from the book of Acts, the second chapter beginning with the 42nd verse. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading for today is from 1 Peter, the second chapter beginning with the 19th verse. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for do, doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. We invite you to please rise as we sing our next hymn, number 711, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Please have a seat. Very truly, I say to you Pharisees, if anyone does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, he is a thief and a robber. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he has brought out all those that are his, he goes on ahead, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Now, they will not follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of the stranger. Now Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. All those that came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Now the the, um, thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the gospel of the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Grace. Mercy and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, some of you will remember a fellow by the name of Austin Dietrich, been sainted for some time now. Austin served as a Marine in World War II. And one day he told me about his experience on Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima terrible battle. Blood, blood everywhere. Third day of that battle, there was a platoon of Marines who were stranded on a hilltop. They were surrounded by Japanese forces, and they were running out of ammunition. And so they had called down to the battalion headquarters and said, we're running out of ammo, and we know tonight they're coming, and we've got to have ammo, or we won't be able to hold that hill. So the commander came out, and there was a half track parked there and it had an armored ammo trailer on the back of it. And so the commander asked for two volunteers, one to man the machine gun on it, the other one to drive the vehicle. So there was a man who volunteered to man the machine gun and so Austin volunteered to drive the half track And he said that the orders were they had to go down into this valley and then up a ridge road that led them to this hilltop. And he said, we had already named that valley the Valley of Death because the the Japanese were in all the caves and they had just had straight line shot at this. He said, but we knew those guys up there had to have the ammo. And so we thought it was worth a try. Now the half track was armored as was the trailer and they could withstand small arms fire. What they really feared, he said, was the Japanese had these trench mortars that they would use, and that that they were afraid of because they could lob one right into their vehicle. As it was, he said, as they drove down into that valley of death, he said the bullets were pinging off everywhere. It was just ping, 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 ping every place. He said, but we got down to the bottom, we got on that ridge road, we drove up that ridge road, and They got all the way through. They got through the valley, and they got to that hilltop, and then they spent that night on that hill with the other Marines. And he said twice that night, the Japanese came at them, and they were able to hold them off. And the next day, around 11 in the morning, the Marines were able to clear that valley and get to them. But they came through that valley, that valley of death, Today we're going to take a look at Psalm 23. It's Good Shepherd Sunday. And for all of us, I imagine Psalm 23 is one of our favorites. Many of you, I imagine, have that memorized. And I've always thought 
that there is one word that is central to the whole psalm, and it's a little word, through. Jesus went through the valley of the shadow of death, and he promises that he's going to lead you and me through that same valley. And so that's what we want to talk about a little bit today. Now, I would say that it's generally true that all of us get stuck at some time or another. I saw a YouTube video a while back. Somebody shot it while they were on a cruise ship. And this was a cruise ship that had a big water slide on it. It was a clear tube water slide. And it showed a lady that started at the beginning of it. And she came down the first hill. And she went down into the first valley. And then she came back up on the next hill. Only for some reason, she didn't have a lot of momentum coming down. And so she came down, went through the valley, and went almost to the top. And then she slid back down and went like this, and she ended up at the bottom of the valley. And she was stuck there. Now, the video ended there. I don't know how they got her out of there. I was waiting for the next person to come flying down. He had that whole tube full of people. But she was stuck down in the valley in the low spot. All of us are going to run into situations with the ups and downs of life where we are going to be stuck. And we get stuck because, first of all, we're mortal. We're mortal. We're not God. We can't see how everything works out. We can't always understand everything. We make mistakes. We are vulnerable. We are very much like sheep who need a shepherd. That's why the Bible again and again compares us to that animal. We can get easily stuck. We also get stuck because we are sinful. We have choices to make in life, and sometimes we make sinful choices. Sometimes we give in to our desires. Sometimes we let our selfishness rule the day, and we find ourselves in situations then where we're stuck, and we're not really quite sure how we're going to get out of those things. We also get stuck because... We can't see much of the future. We can't see the things that might be coming at us. How many times have you said or heard someone say, well, I didn't see that coming? It's true. You know, if, if there's a hurricane coming out of the Atlantic, oh, we hear about this thing when it's just a tropical depression, and for seven or eight days they, they're talking, and Eventually, they're saying it's going to hit someplace between here and there, and so everybody has a chance to get out of its way. And even when we've got tornado-type weather, everybody's got their Dopplers on, right? And there's, oh, there's a hook right here. If you're in this path, you know, find shelter. We get some warning. But there's one natural phenomenon for which we have no warning, and that's an earthquake. One minute, everything's fine, and then the next minute, the whole house falls in on your head. And I have seen over and over again that earthquakes come in people's lives. Everything's fine, and then the phone rings, and you get bad news. Everything's fine, and you're driving on, listening to your radio, and somebody runs a stop sign, and you're T-boned, and there you are. Everything is fine, and then all of a sudden you start getting this radiating pain out of your chest, through your shoulder, down your arm. Next thing you know, you're in an ambulance headed for the hospital. Those things happen. They happen to us, and they take us into very low places. We're vulnerable in that respect. And we all know some people that get down into those valleys, and that's where they're stuck. They just keep spinning their wheels and they just can't find their way out of these low places. The whole world looks dark to them. But the wise people, the wise people know that they cannot get themselves out of those things. They know they need help. They need a shepherd. And that's where our Savior Jesus Christ comes in. That's why today on Good Shepherd Sunday we think about Jesus as that shepherd and we listen for his voice. And his voice says to us today in Psalm 23, go through. Sometimes you just got to go through. It was by, I guess it was 1989. 
Becky and I and the family, we lived in Fort Wayne. I was at the seminary then. And we were driving up for Christmas, driving in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. That was the last time I did that, by the way. Her parents moved to Florida the next year, so we didn't have to go up there anymore. But we went up there, and we really had an uneventful drive until we were on M26, and we were coming in towards Marquette. And there's a place where Marquette Bay comes right down about 200 yards from the road. And we got to that spot, and there was a whiteout. The, the snow was blowing horizontally. It was so thick that when we got into it, we couldn't see more than 10 yards in front of the nose of the car. And to top it off, just before we went in there, a big gasoline tanker truck went into that whiteout. And so we're crawling along, you know, Becky is saying, pull over, pull over. And I said, no, we cannot stop. If we stop, somebody's going to run into us. So we just had to keep pushing along. And every once in a while, up ahead of me, I, I would see it got thicker, it got darker ahead of me. <coughs> I never saw his lights, but I just knew it was a tanker truck. And so we just kept driving, kept driving, and finally we came out the other side of it. We got through it, and sure enough, there was that tanker truck ahead of me. We got through it, and we were safe. And there are a lot of things in our life that we have to go through, that we have to keep moving, we have to keep pushing, but we've got to go someplace through. I've always thought that word through in, in the psalm, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. I've always been glad it says through. It doesn't say I go into it. it doesn't say I camp out there. It doesn't say I stay there. It doesn't say I'm lost there. No, it says through. The Lord makes us a promise that he's going to bring us through the valley of the shadow. And that word through tells us everything we need to know. Listen, depression, trouble, sickness, heartache, those things come to all of us sooner or later and sometimes more than once. And when those things come, we feel often like we're in a valley of shadows. We don't know how it's going to end up. We don't know how it's going to work out. We don't know for sure which direction, how we should go. And then when those times come, we need to hear his voice. But listen, the time to learn the shepherd's voice it's not when you're down in the bottom of that valley. You need to know that shepherd's voice before that time comes. That's why it's so important for you and me to learn the master's voice, to know what Jesus says, to know what Jesus promises, to know what Jesus does. Because the better we know those things now, the more important they are when we're in those valleys the more important they are when we find ourselves surrounded by the shadows that come in life. They come to us all, but we want to be able to hear that voice, to know what Jesus promises, to know what Jesus has done and won for us, to know that God's love is with us even and especially in those hard places. It's those times then that Jesus leads us through. Notice in the psalm it says that yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I'll fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. That rod there is God's law. It is that word that speaks to us that keeps us on the path that helps us negotiate that helps us get through those places and the staff the staff is that, is that good news of the gospel that in Christ Jesus, you and I already have salvation. That in Christ Jesus, we already have God's love. It's not something we earn or purchase. It's something that God has given to us and it's ours by faith in him. We just celebrated Holy Week, Good Friday, Easter morning, 
all of those events were all to tell us and to teach us to hear the shepherd's voice and to trust that he is the one that brings us through. Peter in our epistle lesson today says, Jesus entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Well, you and I, we, we entrust ourselves into the hands of the one who has the kingdom, who has the power, and whose glory it is to take care of his people. Jesus put himself in those hands as he went into the valley of shadow, and he encourages us to do the very same. It's also important that when we find ourselves in those low spots, to ask ourselves, is there something we're doing that leads us there? Sometimes we need to confess what we failed to do. Sometimes we need to confess what is wrong in our life and then to ask God to help us change that. Sometimes we get ourselves into those low spots and we have to be honest about that as well. And ultimately you and I know that there's gonna be a very deep valley that's gonna come in our lives. That unless Jesus comes back before and come Lord Jesus said, be fine by me if he came today, but unless that happens, death is gonna come for each one of us. And that's the ultimate valley of the shadow. But notice what he says. We go through that valley. Because who's already done that? Well, Jesus already did that. Jesus went down into the valley of the shadow and he came through it. Easter morning was all about that. And because our Savior has already gone through that valley, he knows how to negotiate it. And he says, I will lead you through. Listen for my voice. Listen for my promises. Listen for the things that I have already accomplished for you and the promises that I've made. And so even when that time comes, and especially then, he leads us through. As he did at Easter, so too will you and I. What did he say in the, in the gospel lesson day? He said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's what he promises us. And what does it say in the psalm? It says, yea, though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? because you are with me. See, that's Jesus' promise. You and I don't go through those valleys by ourselves, never, ever. We don't go through those valleys and have to find our own way. The Lord says, I'm there with you. I will be with you to the very end of the age. And so he promises us that he's gonna bring us through those valleys. And guess what? Those valleys lead us to those green pastures. Those valleys we go through lead us to the higher places, not down into the darkness, but up into the light. And so we have this promise that by listening to the voice of our Savior and trusting in him, that he's going to lead us through and bring us safely home. My mom and dad were in their middle 80s, and mom wasn't doing so good. She was sleeping a lot. And dad had taken upon himself that every afternoon or evening, he would get her out in the car and, and they would go someplace. He, he wanted to pepper up some. <clears throat> so there was a day near the end of April where the woods in the, up there in Michigan was starting to green up. And so after they ate dinner, dad said, let's go for a ride. Let's go back and see how the woods is doing. Okay, she said, so got her, got her coat on, she got out, got her in the vehicle. Dad had this, he had this Dodge minivan, and he thought it was a truck, it could go anywhere. So they drove back the lane to the woods, and just before he got to the woods, Dad saw a hen turkey run into the woods, but Mom didn't see it. So Dad reasoned that that turkey was headed in this direction, so if he took the lane that went to the west side of the woods, he and that turkey would meet up and mom would see the turkey. That was the plan. Problem was when dad got into the woods, he was looking for the turkey and he drove right into a big mud puddle and the Dodge van went bleh. 
and there they sat. Dad sneezed, way too bad to try and walk out of there. Mom volunteered to walk out of there, and Dad said, no way, the last thing I need is for you to fall down in the woods, and then we are in trouble. He said, no, we'll stay right here. They'll find us, they'll miss us, and they'll come for us. <clears throat> yep. My brother Kurt lived with Mom and Dad. He came home that evening, and Mom and Dad weren't home. He didn't think anything of it. They often went to their friends. They played euchre until 1, 2 in the morning, you know. So when he went to bed, they weren't home yet, but he didn't think anything of it. He woke up around 2 o'clock, and they still weren't home, so he tried to call. Well, Dad had his phone in the vehicle, but the battery was dead, and he didn't have a battery charger in the phone, in the car. So it went right to voicemail, so Kurt thought, well, maybe Dad had to take Mom to the hospital. I guess he'll call me when he knows something. He woke up in the morning. He had to go to dialysis, kidney dialysis. Mom and Dad weren't home yet. He tried to call, went right to voicemail. Well, he had to do his thing. He came out of the house to go to the car, and he heard something, and he listened. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Back in the woods, he hears a horn blowing. He said as soon as he heard it, he knew who that was. Got in the car, drove back there. There's mom and dad. They had spent the entire night in the car. So Kurt had to go to dialysis, but he called my nephew John, and John came over, got the tractor, and pulled the Dodge out of the mud puddle. So I got a bunch of text messages from my siblings. Do you know what our mom and dad? So about, about 10.30 that morning, I called dad. He answered. I said, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. How's mom? She's fine. She's sleeping. I said, what in the world were you thinking? He said, oh, oh and you're going to get on me too? Yeah, I am. They were stuck. And they could not help themselves. They had to be rescued. I, he said, well, I knew they'd come for us eventually. I said, yeah, but if we'd have found two skeletons in the vehicle, that wouldn't have done us any good. <laughs> he said, oh, they would have noticed before then. But they were stuck. They had to be rescued. And oftentimes we find ourselves in valleys where we feel stuck too. And we need help. We need a shepherd who's been there, who's gone through that valley himself, who says to us, I've already found the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Trust in me. Listen to my voice. Follow me. And I will bring you through the valley and to my Father's house forever. Amen. Would you please rise? And so now may the peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Having been blessed to hear the word of God, we now have opportunity to bring our gifts and tithes before the Lord and an opportunity to praise the Lord with an offering of our voices. Let a, you may be seated as we do that right now. Mark.
Let us bow our heads to pray. Good Shepherd Jesus, we walk as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Remind us that you remain there, right there with us through tribulation and turmoil. May your presence bring us confidence and grace that we could overcome the weariness. Help us in places where we get stuck because of our sin or because of things we cannot see coming or because of uh, things we cannot control. Lord Jesus, bring us through that, by your cross and resurrection through that promise you've given us. Bring us the, your shepherd help to believe and to, and to push us through to overcome this world. Remind us always that because of your promise, we will reach the other side of the valley of the shadow of death. And because of this, uh, because of this we too shall rise. But Lord, give us ears to hear your voice that we may follow you. And for, <clears throat> for all things that stand against us may be overcome. Because you tell us that if you're for us, nothing can stand against us. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are sick, those who are broken, and those whose lives have become stuck or altered, and they need your help. Pray, Lord, that you be with Linda Kidd and Frank Paterka, Jane, Jan Durham and Perry Krause, for Jane Hadley and Jill Green, Jeannie Romer and, and Jenna Vendelligan, Christine Steinweddle, Kennedy Donnelly, Pat Franklin, and Leanhard Siebert. We pray for Linda Lockman, Marie Timberlake, and Donata Owsley. For George Williams and Bob Erber, John and Teresa Dunlap, Diana Warren and Kathy Rice. For Jim Ferber, Sean McGee and Gary Sennard. For Melvin Jacoby, for Eddie Moore Norris and for Alice Comstock. For London Smith and My, uh, Myrika Thomas. Dylan Call and Kathy Litch. For Jim Coombs, for Leola Nichols, Jimmy Appleby and Sean McNamara. For Jim Potter and Stephen Corner. Sally Stith and Gary, uh, for Emma Mattingly, and for all those that are known only to you. In your mercy, bring them healing and wholeness through effective medicine, endurance, strength, patience, and faith to meet each challenge. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who serve in our armed forces and first responders, we pray for your blessings and your help. We pray, Lord, that you would keep them strong and able. We pray for Alana Warren and Matt McClellan, Kyle Sears and Ben Meredith, for Joseph Paterka and Roy Schaefer. Jessica Christensen and Michael Kendall, Thomas Kendall and Stephen Hoagland, for Lucas Faith and Jacob Stride, Megan Fitzpatrick King and Lauren Mitchell, Carter Whitaker and Jerry Boyd, for Will Mersman. Grant them strength from, uh, from their faith and wisdom and, and uh, strength to fulfill their duty to their country and to the Lord. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your word reminds us that all who trust in you will not be put to shame because those who believe in Jesus will share in his resurrection. Let those who mourn believe and trust in you now. We pray that you be with family and friends of J.C. Walls, and that you'd also be with the family and friends of David Swisher, who passed away as well. Be with all of us who mourn. Bless us now as only a father can. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for what, what we do as a congregation, and thank you for the immeasurable gifts that you bring to each of us. Bless us to appreciate and hold sacred the eternal things that we celebrate in any given week. Bless us as we continue the search and discussion of a full-time family life director today and be with our search team with, and give us wisdom. Pray, Lord, bless our confirmands as they round out the year with confessional Sunday and confirmation itself. And may all that we do center itself on our Savior, Jesus. Help us to honor our Savior that we may answer the call. Help us to connect with people in their everyday lives. Help us to advance the gospel through God's word and fellowship. Help us to lend ourselves in service that we could become instruments that lead others to salvation. We pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord, we lift up all for whom we pray now, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We invite you to please rise as we sing together the Te Deum.
pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray together now the collect of the day. And so we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us, each by name, and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with all of you. Amen. You may be seated as we close with our last hymn, Hallelujah, Hearts to Heaven. things out for this morning. Uh, certainly want to wish the Lord's blessings to all of you. There are a number of things coming up this week. Uh, Thursday is a particularly full day. Uh, this Thursday is May 4th, and uh, this Thursday is also the day that our group is taking the, uh, tr the bus up to the Orphan Grain Train, and if you want to join us for that, uh, we'll be leaving uh, Thursday morning, uh, 9 o'clock, right, Dolly? Is that one really? 9 o'clock? So if you have clothes to bring in, you can put them on the stage. We'll take those with us. If you want to go with us, uh, lunch will be provided, and we'll be back about the middle of the afternoon. Good news is, is after you get off the bus, you can come right in here, go right to the blood drive on Thursday, <laughs> and then you can donate some, some blood, too. Uh, and uh, the really cool part is, is that if you really want to start things off, 
uh, uh, day, uh, the, the, uh, Thursday is also the National Day of Prayer. So you could go all the way over to the Salvation Army and you can say a prayer with the community as well uh, first thing in the morning uh, with us on that too. So lots going on on Thursday uh, and we want to put that out before you. Okay, uh, Orphan Grain Train mentioned that Voters Assembly, May 14th, Mother's Day is going to be a very important day as well. Lots going on. Not only is it Mother's Day, and that would be enough, right, moms? But we also have some other things going on. Uh, some of those moms who have graduates this year are going to be able to celebrate. We're going to bring those graduates before the congregation at 1030. And for those of you tuning online or any seniors that are in this group, uh, we would ask that you would send me immediately, as fast as possible, pictures, email them to me, a uh, baby picture, uh, a confirmation picture, and a graduation picture. We need those three for that. We'd like to have those at least so we can come up and, and uh, congratulate you and celebrate with you on Mother's Day. Also on Mother's Day, May 14th, we're going to have a special voters assembly with the one agenda item, which is to recognize and formally establish the, uh, the full-time position as a family life director. And we're going to do that between the services between 8 and 10.30, 9, roughly 9.15. So we invite you to be part of that congregational assembly to put that forward. Sorry? Oh, going to be donuts. Sorry. Well, that's, that's <laughs> if anything, now come on. Uh, uh, donuts are worth it, right? He's got an announcement? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got some other things coming up. We also want to uh, bring your can to church next week for our pantry. That's always important. And uh, 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 two grand coming up May 13th, right? Jess and Chris? Chris, thank you. She's one grand. Chris is the second grand. Uh, two grand pianos will be giving a concert at Watkins United Methodist Church in Louisville. So if you haven't seen them online or seen them play before, it's really neat to see them. Uh, dash it out with the, the, the competing pianos, the dueling pianos, right? Yeah, we'll be playing some spring and summer themed things. Very cool. Including Vivaldi. Vivaldi. And hard. And hard. I could practice it. Well, I couldn't do it, so <laughs> anyway. So we invite you to take part in that. Pastor, anything? Yeah, there is one thing. Yeah, I, I know you're, I want to ask her to come forward. Do you have anything? No, I don't have anything. Okay. Alana Warren, please come forward. Do we call you Colonel by now? No. <laughs> yeah. She's a sergeant? You're going to be a sergeant in August. Well, okay. That's great. That's awesome. So she is finally home. She's a Marine. She's tough, right? Watch out. Uh, but she is uh, home from Okinawa after what was supposed to be one year turned into four, right? Because of COVID. So it's been a while since we've seen her. Her Japanese is still rusty as I hear it, so that's okay. But uh, she said it's great to be back in town where everybody's speaking the same language. I thought so. it was interesting <laughs> that I just happened to have that illustration about Austin Dietrich, another jarhead that I knew. So uh, yes. thank you for your service. Yes. Good to see you. So that's what we want to tell you. Thank you very much. All right, two other things. Don't get too excited. <laughs> so uh, this week on May 2nd, which is uh, and 3rd, which is Monday, or Tuesday and Wednesday, if you have ordered flowers with the preschool, you get to pick those up this week between 11.30 and 12.30 or 2.30 and 5 o'clock. I know George Ann was about to come up and accost me. Thanks for reminding me of this. <laughs> so, yes, I got that note here. Also, if you're able to work this week, Lakeview Springs, formerly known as Cedarbrook, is redoing the, the, the cabin out there and uh, the main log house. And they're uh, needing hands. Uh, bring your tools, bring yourself an hour, two hours, whatever time you can give. Uh, sometime from May 2nd through the rest of the week, we're working on that cabin to get it ready for its, its remodel. So if you can do any of that, we would appreciate that uh, very much. So, all right, now we're done. We can go. It's okay. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll see you out front. <laughs> Blessings on your week.